that, super builds. They've been kind of nerfed by Bungie with the recent patch and placed in the tier so you know which super is the best best and others not so much. But that shouldn't put a stop to our fun. As of today, I have a very neat but pretty common voice super build that will allow you to get your super back within a few seconds or you can get your money back. Now, do you remember Doomfang Pauldrons? Well, these exotics will be seeing a lot of extensive use come Witch Queen and also Void 3.0. And this could make the exotic one of the best to use exotics from simple tasks to end games. So here's a build designed for getting you ready for the new update and possibly new adventure that lies ahead, while also giving you a really quick cooldown to boot. But before we head in, a word from our sponsor. And yes, you heard that right, your boy is making moves. AOR.com offers discounted silver for Destiny 2 users. Use my code to get 3% off. Now if you enjoyed the video, then we really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. Starting off the subclass, we will be using the code aggressor for the melee focused subclass abilities and how we can offer the user faster super cooldown within a well respected melee or two. The idea of the build is to utilize the shield bash ability as much as we can and trigger in the trenches ability which will provide us back a large amount of super energy from a single melee hit. This is the main focus of the build which is very easy to achieve and luckily doesn't require a lot to achieve it, so if you are a new player, you can use this build and get the same effect indefinite. So for this to work, we need to make sure our shield bash ability is fully ready and reliable at all times, so we can get the pairing of perks to work. For this, having your melee stat at 80 to 100 is ideal as this will jumpstart any of the mods or perks being used and regen a lot more faster. Key mods such as Melee Wellmaker, Melee Kickstart, and Reaping Wellmaker will all offer you some form of melee regen that you can activate the moment you get the chance to do so. Melee Wellmaker now will be used in conjunction of the Elemental Charge mod and Protective Light mod so that every time we melee and get a kill, we get Protective Light active in the background and thus provide you with an extra layer of defense. If you feel you come up short with this, then I would recommend you use the Monte Carlo for its melee range as it's pretty much designed for the build like this. I also recommend you have the Radiant Light mod attached as that will garner you a plus 20 in strength for free, so it's a nice boost to the stat without much investment needed. Once this is actioned, you'll then want to apply the hands-on for the extra juice in super regen and power preservation as that mod will allow you to produce more orbs of power via super. As the build will allow me to get my super up very fast, it only makes sense to produce as much orbs of power for my allies so that they can get their supers up and so forth. This will further link into the subclass tree, Second Shield, which when everything is in use, you'll be producing orbs of power like a squirrel who just saw a mother load of nuts after winter. Um, I don't know if that's even funny or I'm just trying to be witty but just, please just go with it for the time being. Anyways, there is a bit more to build than what is shown, but this is just a gist of what you need to be aware of and how the effects of one ability will lead to multiple other things as well. So now this leads us into the weapons and to be honest they don't hold a big role in the setup, so you are free to pick and choose what weapons you want to use. However, if you decide to go into endgame content with champions involved, then it may be wise for you to have a curated loadout that will keep your abilities fresh and ready. For example, we have the Hailing Confusion Pulse with Pulse Monitor and Wellspring, a nice and fairly super weapon to use in endgame, the weapon perks offer a great use of automatic reloading when injured and the ability to gather ability energy upon kills made. Now like I said, if you want you can use Monte Carlo instead to gather your melee energy faster as it's pretty much common sense at this point, but using a weapon with Wellspring is also effective as it covers all abilities in terms of gathering energy at a steady pace. With the recent adjustment to ability regen, perks like Wellspring have started to become popular once again for its universal fit in builds. It's not the best, but it's helpful with giving you the extra boost when you need it most, and on top of that, it's also available on some pretty extensive weapons groups, so you're not being locked down to using just one or two weapons with a perk all the time. Now I would highly recommend you go ahead and farm the Umbral Engrams before it's too late for the Friction Fire SMG. It's kinetic and it's a precision frame just like Shira's and can roll with the perk as well. It's really great and will come in handy down the line, I do promise you. For our secondary, we then have the Gladiacasm Fusion with Substitutions and Reservoir Burst and this will help a lot in taking out large group of combatants in one blast while also debuffing via the Particle Deconstruction mod. If you want a way to create wells as you please, then this weapon roll with the explosive wallmaker mod is basically Telestone baby form. 
It hits hard and can take out groups easily, but the most important part of the weapon is how you can trigger substance after each kill. This baby is literally a void warlock wet dream of a weapon and honestly feel closely to exotic with how it functions. Of course, not everyone would have gotten the weapon roll when it was offered, so alternatively, the plug one is a good fit that can also get the RB perk available. For heavy, I've chosen to use both the Lament and the Sleeper Simulant depending on the situation and environment I am in. If I'm in close range fight and need an anti-barrier weapon, then the Lament will be the use. If I wanted nuke a boss with Glee, then Sleeper will be of course the pick. No ideal heavy is needed since our super will be up all the time, so honestly, those two choices are good, but any heavy is viable. For stats, strength is of course your main stat that you'll be focusing as much time and effort into to get the build rolling once complete. In this section, not much needs to be covered since a lot of it is just building on what the exotic and subclass does, so no heavy lifting is required for the build. Ideally, 80 to 100 is the area you'll want to be and aim for, but do remember you do have certain mods available that can speed up the cooldown rate of the stat naturally while also using your subclass as a springboard to further enhance the area. Now as mentioned earlier, mini wellmaker will be used a lot to create wells instantly and provide you the protected light layer or defense straight away, which is useful for when you commit to an action and are surrounded by combatants and you can't back out. You then have mini kickstart which will be kicking in the moment you're out of mini energy and then reaping wellmaker will be there in case of an emergency. If you also have the Radiant Light mod, then add that on with that extra boost and stat points as you really don't want to waste too much slots on other non-useful mods. Once Strength is covered, this will then lead into Intellect which is covered by the Doomfang and is a dotted trait which will give you super energy upon melee hits, and with high strength cooldown, this will be occurring a lot. Adding in the hands on mod is highly recommended for that extra boost in super regen, and also adding in the power preservation mod can go a long way for helping your team out, since pairing this with Doomfang and this is a trait means that you can retain your super and melee for a long time, while also producing orbs like no other. Left over wise, we have the fusion scavenger for more ammo for fusion rifles we use, and particle deconstruction mod for that bonus debuff when applied via fusions. Although this could also be swapped out for something like Passive Guard if you're using a sword as you're rarely going to be using your fusion for debuffing purposes all the time. Plus, 9 times out of 10, your team will be carrying the mod, although this is down to you personally. So as we covered everything that we need to know and you are up to date with everything, here are the mods used for creating the setup and how they all will work together once in hand. For head, we have strength, power preservation, Hands on and elemental charge mod. Arm, we have mini kickstart and mini wall maker mod. Chest, we have strength, concussive dampener, arc damage resistance, and radiant light mod. Leg, we have strength, fusion scavenger, and protective light mod. Mark, we have Maya discipline, particle deconstruction, and reaping wall maker mod. Doom fan pulsions are the type of exotics that are pretty common and powerful straight out of the day they are released, but not too powerful to where people complain about them or bungee to nerf them after a few months of play. They are reliable, fun, and get the job done, and they are perfect exotics for those that love to melee and love to use their super a lot. Now I can say without a doubt that the exotics will be heavily used come Void 3.0 as if we get an ability that allows us to throw our shields when not in our super form then this can become an all round top tier build that can allow users to build up super at a safe distance. Something like the status hunter shurikens with a bit more damage is the spot I'm looking at. Now, if the customization is truly as wide as what status is like, then having all the abilities such as defensive strike, turn the tide, tactical strike, and in the trenches as a perk build would be one of the most disgusting setups that for any mini user to use. Now go ahead and slap on a weapon with Monte Carlo or a weapon with Wellspring and at that point we truly would need to call the United Nations on you for how absolutely chaotic the build is. Now in case such an ability comes true, then this build could see some effective use in endgame content as well as we can use it to build super up quickly and then produce tons of orbs for our allies so that they can use it for their pleasure. It would be similar to Ursus before they got slightly adjusted to where we could produce orbs via blocking in near infinite, which is still possible. Everything else protection wise would be covered via the mods available and weapons, depending on the champion type you face, can be easily implemented to cover such areas that are weak. 
For now though, we can only dream and stick with what we currently got. A build designed around milling and build up super quickly to then produce orbs for as long as possible. It works out really well for any content that has waves of combatants coming at you, as one melee can easily give you around 40 plus super energy per melee, which means that you only need about maybe 3, 4, maybe even 5 melee hits to get your super up. And from the clip shown, you can see it fairly a lot you get back from doing so. So I tried to adjust the build for endgame focus as much as I could, and it did have its uses as long as you melee when it's clear to do so. Against a simple group of my combatants in Mass for example, you would be safe to pull it off and come out slightly damaged, but okay. But when surrounded by all types though, and you can kiss your luck goodbye as they will destroy you there and then. However, it can work and I've used it in Mass of Content to see how far I can get it and it does work. You just got to be careful and where you're using it at. GMs now were a no-go as they were too risky to pull off and combatants hit very hard in melee range, so even if you get the melee off, you'll likely not survive the outcome. Although this is definitely an interesting build that I can see being picked up once Void 3.0 comes, as it has to make another useful buffer build for all, but this would depend on what our subtree will look like and offer us. If the above options are made available, or something similar, then this will pop off along with the exotic. But if not, then it's no biggie as the build is still optimal for any content except for GMs and sadly, it just basically means you have to rely on a different and more common exotic such as Ursus. So that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with new changes. Once again, thanks for stopping by guys and I'll see you on the next one.